Welcome to the second part of Excel for Small Contractors. I'm teaching you how to build an Excel uh, estimating sheet. I'm not an expert. I'm totally, completely self-taught. I've never taken a class on it except for watch some YouTube videos and stumble my way through it. <coughs> so I'm going to put together another video for you. We're going to expand on this worksheet to uh, make it a little bit more workable. Uh, and I've, try, I've made several of these and keep throwing them away. I've resolved to just stumble my way through and teach you things as I manipulate the sheet and as I teach you. You're going to see my mistakes and you're going to see the way I build things. First thing I'm going to do is change quantity so it fits. I'm just going to type in QTY and that'll work for that. I usually don't do a contingency for labor. I just mark up labor 20% if I'm uncomfortable with the job. So I'm going to go to contingency. Oh, no, I, I don't want to do that. I want to eliminate these cells. So I uh, eliminate the cells. I right click. It didn't show up. There you go. I press delete. I want to eliminate the shell, the cells and shift the other ones up. So I've got, and you notice my total job, I've got the uh, size of the font too large. So I'll go down there <coughs> and just bring it back within the size of the, that we've designated for this. Uh, this sheet has some obvious limitations. First off, you can only get about 19. Uh, you can get, uh, I'll show you a couple things while we're doing this. Um, you can, there's a count of, there's a count of 13, there's more than that there. You can only get about, well, let me see. Yeah, you can only get 13 items in this. Now as I do that, take a look at this. Say I want to know what uh, my, what my cedar bill is going to be. If I highlight those, down here it's a sum of $716 in cedar. There's eight items and an average cost of $89. It's kind of helpful once in a while to look through certain areas and just highlight and take a look at the price. Or you can just type in a, a row of numbers here and uh, highlight them and you can it'll add it up for you. <clears throat> okay, so we have some obvious problems, and that's we can only get 13 items in our estimate. What I'm going to do is uh, take these, uh, the subtotal materials and the subtotal labor, and I'm going to put them at the top. Now, I experimented earlier, and I got two larger spaces. So I'm going to get all of these um, into a smaller font. That'll work. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to put seven below Jones jobs. I'm going to put seven rows. And I'm going to insert rows. I could have right clicked and done that. A friend of mine m mentioned that in the very first video I did, I confused and I was using right click when I meant to say left click and vice versa. So I created rows up there to work with. I'm going to take this group of cells and I'm going to grab it in the middle and just move it up. Okay. Now I can keep building my estimate as far down as I want. I'm going to use fill again. And I'm going to fill it down to, let's say, row 200. It's easy to remember, easy to work with. I'll show you why, why we're going to have to keep some of that, remember that later. And also, what we're doing is we're transferring this formula We're transferring this formula down through the rest of those rows, and I've still highlighted it with a gray 
so that I know that that, that column has a formula in it. So the, here's the formula that I transferred down, H28 times G28. Down here on row 36, it's H36 times G36. <coughs> I'm going to change this to, say, just hours. Okay, what did I want to do? Yes, I want to put in a different way. Uh, I want to show you a different way of, of charging or figuring your hours versus your rate. I'm going to insert a couple rows up here. I'm going to write in what's called crew rate. And I did it that way because that's how I'm going to name this cell later. And our rate for the crew is $100 an hour. And I'm going to go one man, and that's at $50 an hour. Now I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to delete this column. I'm going to show you why. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to estimate here at one hour, this cell equals one times our crew rate. Enter. Well, great. That works good. We got rid of a column. We've tightened up everything. Now watch when I take and fill that in. What it did was, this cell is G12 times G2, which is our crew rate. Down here on billing, it's G13, G13 times G3s. It, it is filling in, it's not using the crew rate each time. And then for remove the old deck, it went two hours, or G14 times G4, which is blank. So I'm going to show you, we're going to name this cell. Come over here. There can't be any spaces when you name a cell. That's why I put an underscore if I want to separate them. And you have to press enter. If you don't press enter, all your work's for naught. And I'm going to press one man cell. or one. I'm going to name this cell one man and press enter. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. We're going to go back and rebuild this cell, or rebuild this formula. G12 times crew rate. See how it says crew rate? And press enter. Now I'm going to take that all the way down to 200. And now Row 200 is 202. Well, I guess I'm all the way down 202. Right, is 202 times crew rate. I want it to be at 200 because we're going to have to do our totals later. So I'm going to clear um, clear all from those two cells. Doesn't really matter. Our materials, our subtotal of materials, is still doing D12 through D30, and yet we've added a whole bunch of spaces underneath. So all we have to do to change that formula is go up here and put in 200. Press Enter. Same thing with our, sub, our subtotal of our labor. We're going to start the way we are set up on the first sheet, we're, D, we're H12 through H30. Now we want that to be H200. Enter. Now once in a while you're going to want to figure a, th a job and you're going to say, okay, the crew is going to do all these things, but when it gets to building the stairs, that's just going to be one person. So what I do for that is I take that, and here's it's got my form formula up there for that cell. I eliminate crew rate and I insert one man rate. Enter. And I, I uh, 
use fill to create that same formula for row 24. So it's G24 times one man. Now when I do that, I like to put a color in the cell. So I usually use orange, so it's kind of a warning. And now, now I know that the rate is different on those two cells. That's just one man doing it. Another thing that I like to do is, uh, let me see, where do we have a space for that? We'll just put it in here as total hours. And I'm going to, in this cell, and that's kind of handy to track so you can kind of figure out how many hours you've got figured up for the job and if it's going to take a week or three days. I'm going to press auto sum and then highlight all the way down to row 200. Enter. So as I'm doing the job, I can see that I'm now at 29 and a half hours. Sometimes I do that and I eliminate the uh, estimating and billing and keep the office hours out of it so I can keep it pure job time. Now as you work down the sheet, you start losing the top part. I'm going to show you how to lock the top at this level. We're going to go to view and we're going to freeze panes. So now everything above that is frozen. So as we work our way down and our materials, we still can see what the materials, price, quantity, and uh, we can still see how the job is uh, totaling out. Another thing that I like to do is uh, add some color. For my jobs, I always put uh, materials at blue and labor at uh, as green. And so I can quickly look and see that this is uh, that blue always means la materials and green always means labor. And total job, if you want to give that a color, I kind of like some of these. Now I'm going to make my total job a little bit bigger and you can see I got a problem. Here's something I just learned in the just highlight this cell or anything in this row and then you can take it and pull it over. That's slick. I didn't I've used Excel for several years and didn't know that trick. 13 minutes. We got a couple minutes left to go. Let me see what else what else do I want to do with this sheet? I want the Jones job to be a bigger. I want these to be dollar signs. You can see how it adjusted the size of that column as I did that. I think that's just about all I want to teach you for this job. Um, unless this is just a visual thing and it's something that you may want to do, you may not want to do. Uh, these will put borders on. You can put it, you can create a border or you can do all borders. So y if you like cell or lines around your cells, you can make it your, uh, your sheet look like that. I'm not going to keep that. I'm going to stop this uh, YouTube and we'll pick up with uh, YouTube number three. And thank you for following along. Now I think you've got a pretty usable uh, estimating sheet that you can take up to about well, as many, sh you can put as many uh, rows in there as you want. Thank you very much for watching.